Hey folks, Country Prepper here. So we have an ice storm that's supposed to hit us sometime tomorrow. It depends on which uh, weather channel or whatever news source or weather source that you uh, look at that they'll all tell you something different. So it's the only job you can have in this world where you can be wrong almost all the time and still keep your job. But anyway, so I'm prepping for this ice storm that's coming. Uh, you don't know, you know, since the weather is almost always wrong, uh, you can't depend on how bad it's going to be or how long it's going to last, anything like that. So I always like to be way over prepared than be under prepared, of course. So just in case there's a power outage, that means we won't have any heat. We'd still have hot water, but without heat in the house, our pipes could freeze, and yada, yada, yada. There's just all kinds of things you got to think of. So uh, I've already started on this, and I thought, hey, maybe I should have a camera pointing at me and kind of let you guys know what uh, stuff I've been up to and kind of some of the steps I take to prepare for a storm like this. So I've already filled up both vehicles with gas, and... Uh, I have an extra one of these radiant uh, uh, tank heaters for a propane tank. I have a second propane bottle. I have the one here in the garage that I use first thing in the morning just to take the chill out of here first thing. Uh, that one was exchanged here just a couple days ago and I've used it for like maybe 20 minutes total. So there's still plenty of life left in that uh, uh bottle of propane but uh if the heat if the power should go out and we lose our heat then i could always take those in the house and we have a kerosene heater in the basement so i've gotten a few gallon of kerosene for that um but we could set a propane heater in the bathroom and in the kitchen and kind of point them towards the water sources so that the pipes don't freeze you can also um turn your faucets on and just let them trickle. You don't have to turn them on very high, just a really small stream like the lead of a pencil, just really thin, just to keep the water flowing so it doesn't freeze. But um, I think since we don't have a full basement, we have uh, the basement part where the water heater and the furnace is, and then all of our pipes running out from that, And uh, but there's a couple crawl spaces, and that's where the bathroom and the kitchen is, of course. So I have the kerosene heater in the basement and I have fans that are blowing into those uh, areas into those crawl spaces and so that keeps them water lines from hopefully keep them from freezing uh, when the furnace is run and it keeps them from freezing even when it gets to be 20 below wind chill around here and so that's another thing you don't know how much the wind is going to blow we're supposed to get anywhere from like a quarter inch to an inch of ice depending on which news source you're watching of course and uh, of course some rain and maybe some snow mixed in with it and you just don't know what's coming so anyhow i thought i'd show you guys i've rambled on enough show you some of the stuff that i've gone through uh pulled some stuff out of storage had to pick up a couple of things but of course always want to have make sure you got plenty of spare batteries most of my headlamps take triple a's so i got two of those and uh you know some extra candles i've got all kinds of tea light candles but uh, don't throw the little glass globe thingies or whatever you want to call those don't throw them away melt the wax out of them and you can use them to put tea candles back in it's just one of those little things um, all of my solar stuff i have had out on the deck in bright sunshine today so they got all charged up and uh, these and these i'm going to be really kind of excited to test those out but uh, I've, I've turned them on and used them a few times the one really cool thing is they can both be used as a power bank so that's kind of a a nice backup option uh, of course got the tank heater got some hand warmers toe warmers and stuff like that uh, you might want to have either some tarps or some plastic drop cloths that you can um, section off a room if you don't have a, a room that uh, uh, like our dining room has open, just big open walkways, so no way to close that off. So uh, you could put up tarps or plastic or whatever and have a one room heat source. That way everybody stays warm and you can actually sleep. If it gets really bad to where we can't even keep it warm in there, I know I can keep it warm in here in the garage. So uh, with the wood stove and two propane heaters, it'd be we'd be sweating in here. So. What else? I've been charging up my rechargeables. We have hallway lights that are motion lights, and then the kids' rooms and the bathroom all have the same uh, motion lights that are run off of AA batteries. Uh, so they all take four AA's, so I'm charging up those batteries on this uh, Sunjack uh, USB charger. 
Of course, you got your weather radios. I'm charging up my, well, that one's charged finally. Uh, I have my Baofeng, uh, yeah, radios, ham radios. So I got two of those. This is the one I usually just keep here in the garage and listen to. This is the one I usually keep in my bug out bag. This one is a uh, UV5RWP, supposed to be uh, water resistant and dust proof. I'll leave a link to that one. I haven't done a video on that one, so I'll leave a link to it if I can find it. I got it on Amazon, but uh, they were out of them last time I looked. So if I find a link to it, I'll let you guys know. Um, another thing is cooking sources. You don't know how long the power is going to be out, so I got the Coleman camp stove over here, and I got a couple extra bottles of propane for it. I've uh, got my lanterns, my UCO lantern, and uh, just just a bunch of different lanterns. you got to have lots of light at night. Um, first aid kit. Uh, bad things happen at night. Bad things happen during storms. You don't know when somebody's going to come to your front door injured. So, or maybe something happens to you because you're fumbling around in the dark, but uh, never a bad idea to have a first aid kit around. Uh, that's the one I usually keep in my truck, but uh, I got it because it's more compre more, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, maybe comprehensive or more uh, extensive. Uh, has more trauma type stuff, but also has a little stuff in there too. And then I got my uh, Voyager kit here that has a lot of the smaller stuff. We have stuff in the house too, of course. But Another major thing not to forget, and you can pick these up at Home Depot for like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that. If you're running a camp stove like that in the house, something that's not meant to be used in the house, make sure you have some sort of fire extinguisher, uh, pre preferably something a little bigger than this. Uh, but this will do if you have nothing else and you're running low on money. Uh, another thing that I use is the M71 fuel stoves. Um, and those, and of course, any type of stove like that will help provide heat. But you don't want to uh, let them run forever and run yourself out of the little bottles of propane unless you got tons of them. Now well, here's another one I wanted to show you guys. And I need to do a video on this. But this is another lantern that also has red light for night. Flashing red and blue, you see there. And... Uh, then it has SOS, and this one also works as a power bank too. You just unscrew that back part right there, and it has uh, USB, uh, you know, both ends here. I'll show you, right like there. So yeah, that's a pretty good deal. And uh, I got this off of Gear Best. I don't remember how much it was, but I'm pretty sure it was. It was really inexpensive. Another thing is if you're. Uh, if you weren't prepared and you have a storm like this coming, you're low on money, uh, Walmart has these little flashlights and headlamps. I got these for the kids. These are a buck a piece and they come with the batteries, guys. So, and these are actually really freaking bright. So, uh, yeah, pretty good lights for a dollar. And if you're building a power outage kit, they're they're decent enough for that for something to just leave around but uh make sure you store your batteries outside of the flashlight or the headlamp whatever now speaking of kids and keeping them entertained so they don't drive you insane um you might want to have some board games uh definitely charge up any of their toys or put fresh batteries in them or recharge the batteries that sort of thing um, if they're old enough to have tablets or, you know, like a Nintendo handheld or one of them kind of things, make sure those are charged up, stuff like that. Another easy, cheap thing that you can do, you wouldn't believe how entertaining kids find glow sticks. So, uh, get, get a few of those they're handy to have around anyway. Another thing you want to make sure that you have extra blankets, sleeping bags, things like that in case the power goes out and you're just trying to keep that one room warm. As far as food goes, I can cook pretty much anything on that, but usually uh, just like we'll warm up to try to conserve fuel. We'll just like warm up cans of like chunky soup or something like that. Another thing you might want to do before the storm hits is take any kind of meat or uh, perishable stuff out of the fridge put it in the freezer because the more stuff you have in the freezer the longer it will stay cold and stay frozen and stay um stay good anyway last but not least speaking of water in case your pipes freeze um, i have a three gallon aqua rain uh, filter kind of like a berkey 
but it's a you know cheaper brand and uh, I think they work just as good so I got that filled up uh, we filled up five gallon buckets of water probably fill up the bathtub before we go to bed just in case and uh, just make sure we have water around so we can flush the toilet things like that water to cook with um, we have a five gallon and a three gallon uh, water coolers like you see on the construction sites we'll have those filled up of course we have gallons of water throughout the house and in storage and so uh, that's all for cooking with though but you'll want to fill up any kind of container you can all your water bottles and stuff like that make sure they're full of water so you have good clean water to drink refill your uh, water filter if you have an aqua rain or a berkey or one of those types of big gravity filters uh, make sure that thing is topped off before uh, before the night's out before the storm hits and uh, you'll be pretty good to go for water just try to make sure that you do everything you possibly can so that you do not have to leave your house if you do end up for some stupid reason have to leave your house you have no other choice make sure you have a good tow rope and a good kit uh, extra blankets wool and stuff like that in your vehicles hopefully you have a four-wheel drive but four-wheel drive it might get you going on ice, but it doesn't help you stop, so keep that in mind. So anyway, this ice storm is supposed to hit uh, northern Missouri and Kansas and most of Iowa where I live. So, uh, you know, if you're in one of those states, stay safe and stay warm, guys. If you have any other tips for prepping for a uh, storm like this, please leave a comment down below. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.